This podcast is brought to you by Infinite Resources, a local staffing agency connecting diverse job candidates and central Iowa companies. Amplified. Welcome to Shed Talk. Unveiling the conversations that thrive behind the shed, where authenticity meets unfiltered stories. I'm Javier Tool, certified personal trainer and owner of Tool Shed Training. And I'm Tammy Humpel, professional educator and leadership coach. Today is episode two in our Return to Happiness series, and we're talking about how we view recognition today and how it enters into our values, impacts our decisions, and motivates us. And I have two quotes that we are going to start with. They're a little bit in contradiction to each other, and maybe one challenges the other. So the first one is by Dale Carnegie. He says, people work for money, but go the extra mile for recognition, praise, and reward. And on the other hand, Taylor Hackford says, but unfortunately, sometimes that affirmation creates a sense that you deserve special treatment and recognition in areas when we aren't so talented. I like that one, and I'm going to get to it in a second, but i got to give you a ton of recognition from uh, the first episode. So the first episode, you did amazing, and I was like, I need to go home and practice and step up my game because I was watching it, and I was like sweating profusely from my forehead because I was like, boy, she's really good at this. <laughs> so there's some recognition right off the bat. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get right to the point. So I think a lot of times recognition helps us be successful and it helps drives us a little bit but everyone has such a different perception and I'm just going to go right into my early years and I think it changes with as we get older so when I was younger and starting my professional career I was really good at a lot of things but I don't know if I was good at the whole picture so I would do really well at a job somebody from another job would recognize that and they would look at me like Javier you know you should come work for my company and that was it that's all I really needed and I think it was like a few years after that, I took a job at another place, and the vice president of the company sat down with me and said something to me. He's like, hey, I kind of looked at your resume. It looks like you've had a lot of experience. And I think what he was trying to tell me is like, it looks like you have a lot of jobs. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, do yourself a favor. For the next three years, just sit down and learn. Learn the job. Learn the ins. Learn the outs. And, you know, I did that. I sat down, learned the people, learned everybody's name, learned the, the things with the um, making sure that, I knew the systems and all those things. And I started noticing something. People started coming through the door. And then I started realizing one thing. I didn't need so much the recognition from other people as much as I started getting recognition for my own hard work. And honestly, I stayed at that job until I started my own professional career outside of there. And I think learning your own recognition is a big thing because it doesn't matter how much recognition you get from other people. If you don't have it for yourself, it sends you into a tailspin if you're not receiving it or how you react to it when you get it. Yeah, and I think there's a lot of different ways that that we can receive it, that people give it. And, and I don't know if we change. We talked a little bit about this last time, that we sort of evolve as, as we grow and, and move through our lives. And I don't know if we evolve in what we need, like y- you maybe did, right? Right. With um, just moving from that somebody wants me to the next thing and that was enough to pull you to the next thing to really wanting to get good at what you do and then the recognition wasn't so much about someone wanting you but recognizing that you were good at it, that you had value. And I think that is so much more important um, once we realize what the feeling is that we're looking for because that that just someone wanting you to do the next thing is fleeting. Right. So when I look at that, I even look at like the perception of that job. So I would like, there's a thing like one of my clients and I, I won't use names, but he's going to know when I say this, but he's a very successful businessman. And he said, one of the things that makes him, I would say get recognition is by folding the laundry. And like when he gets done folding the towels the job is done because in a lot of our professions, the job is really never done. You're always working towards something, a bigger goal. So his recognition is when all of a sudden he has something done. And I think about that when I would clean my gyms. Like I have a whole day of work and all of a sudden I get to clean the gym at night, shut the lights off, it smells good, and all of a sudden my day is done. Sometimes that recognition is all I need is to see it, to see the finished product. And I think that goes with 
with what you said, like with age, I think with yeah. growing in my job, because before I needed someone to tell me that it looked good. Like now I can shut the lights off at night and be like, wow, that's amazing. And I think that's a recognition of an accomplishment, mm-hmm. right? An accomplishment that is the end of the day that you've done something important, but bigger, even for him, bigger than that, it symbolized something that he's accomplished with his career, not just the end of the day. Right. So that was bigger for him. And I'll go back into that story again, because as we get in the personal side, that flip flops into something else, which is pretty amazing. I think work life recognition is sometimes easier to recognize I think like mm-hmm. if you have a job where your boss gives you recognition or you get a merit raise every year, I think that helps. Or if you have a coworker who is very friendly, who notices your work. But I also think if you don't get that recognition, sometimes you lose that drive. So I think work recognition is sometimes easier to see, but I don't think it's always valued as much because if you're getting recognition for the, if everyone's getting the same recognition, like the, is it the 3.5% raise that you might get every year that well, if everyone's getting it, is it really as important to me? Yeah, so you're working towards that thing again, right? Mm-hmm. Even if it's monetary, which takes us back a little bit to what we talked about, and wealth and security and what's important to us. Um, but it's that external piece when it's the, I know if I work hard enough, I'll be rewarded with this raise. And it's the same for everyone. So, so when does the internal takeover from the external and how much do we both of the how much of both of those do we need probably a little bit of both right right I think about this in, in terms to like I think in a, in a job setting too like if you work really really hard and I think maybe this might and I mean this is just me with my personal opinion I throw my hands up when I say that because when I was working an eight to four job I think sometimes I didn't really I was looking for more of that recognition and I don't know if I was as self-driven because I didn't I don't know if I didn't have to be because somebody was driving me a little bit. Mm-hmm. And if I didn't get the recognition for something I thought it was really good, sometimes it would totally bum me out. Like I would be like, gosh, I worked really, really hard today or I got a, a client to the next level, but no one really noticed it. And But in this profession, now that I own my own business, I don't feel like I need that recognition as much because I'm like, dude, you've got to do it. Mm-hmm. Like you have to be able to push yourself and maneuver yourself. And I wish I could have taken this sense of who I am today and put it back in that workplace where I didn't have to rely on someone so much to be like, Hey, I see you doing it and you're doing a great job, but you gave someone else praise, but you didn't see what I was doing. I think that that reminds me of, I I was doing some reading this past week on greatness and, and there was a reel that was uh, advertising a book about greatness. And it talked about uh, being exceptional or great, or famous, or a champion, hasn't really fulfilled anyone. And I, I think therein lies the secret to, to recognition and learning to, to be self-affirmed, to recognize your own greatness. And, and then it makes me think about all that we do to get good isn't enough to be great, and even when we're great, that isn't enough if it doesn't feel like we're doing something worthwhile. So, so it makes me think about last, last time we talked, wealth isn't as great as recognition, and recognition isn't as great as being fulfilled and, and feeling like at the end of the day you've accomplished something. When you fold the towels, you, you feel the, the sense that there's something bigger than you. This podcast is killing my future. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> kidding. Because last week, as we're, we're sitting there and we're talking about the financial gains and recognition, this year I was going for a financial number mm-hmm. and I was going to hit it no matter what it took. And my son had graduated, it was, was going through graduation and he didn't need me at home as much. And <clears throat> I hit this pinnacle number and then I was like, I still got a few months left. Let's, let's hit another, let's hit another number. And each time I'd hit that number, it was a sense of recognition for myself saying, hey, you did it. Like, this is what you've been working for for the last seven or eight years. And now you're doing it. But when I got there, it wasn't really that fulfilling. Mm -hmm. Like, it was kind of like, I told you, like, when I ran that half marathon and I finished that half marathon, that's a whole other story we'll get into one of these days. But somebody gave me the medal and they're like, gosh, are you going to do it again? How do you feel? I was like, I didn't really feel anything. And I found my medal underneath my truck, truck, like, seat, like, two years later. 
that's kind of how I felt about hitting this pinnacle. And I, you know, maybe I'm still looking for what recognition do I need to drive? Because it, it isn't financial, I don't think, for me. And I think that after last week, now I'm lost. I'm like out there what, searching. What is it really? <laughs> searching that, this world. That I need. And I think it's different for for different people. And I also, we talked about this in the gym earlier. I feel like there's a generational difference. Right. And maybe that, but we didn't talk about this, but maybe we all are a little more driven by the things when we're starting out and when we're younger. Um, although I think we we are living in a time when we we give things for participating, we give things for winning, we, we give things instead of just allowing uh, allowing ourselves to to feel good about doing what we're doing and to feel good about getting better at what we're doing. So there always has to be some sort of attachment at the end of, of what we do. Right. And I think what you said too, I think culturally too, you see a difference like age, like where you where you grew up. Like, and you're, you're probably from the same era as, as I was. Like, you know, you had a great game or you did something great. Your parents were like, good job. But these are things you probably could have done a little bit better. <laughs> Usually. Or, yeah, just <laughs> show up again next week, right. right? I was more on the bench than in the <laughs> game a lot of times. Well, I bet your parents were like, you look great on the on bench. On the bench. So this is what bench. you can do to get off the bench. <laughs> and uh, so I look at this era of, like, new employees coming through and, you know, they're looking to get somewhere faster. And I think COVID kind of helped that a little bit because the need for workers was there. And it was a whole different sense of needs. But you see kids getting further in their education faster than we probably did. And all of a sudden, they're getting jobs with higher pay faster than we did. So the recognition is coming very quickly. But is it coming too quickly? Or let me ask you another question. Are we not recognizing them enough for the tools that they have? Are we saying you haven't put in your time yet? Mm, I do think that happens. I do that. I think that happens. There's there's that job that they're going for or their promotion or they feel like they have the skills and, and know what they want to do. I think you and I are a little bit like that too, right? We right. know what we want to do. We know what we're good at. And if there's something that feels like it's in the way all the time, I have been willing to wait knowing that if I look for the right avenue, I look for the right opportunity, it will come. I'm not sure there's that willingness to wait anymore. That actually reminds me of um, another uh, blog that I was reading. It was Leadership Vision Consulting, and this is what they said um, about generational differences. I oversaw a youth mentoring network that allowed me to see brilliance and potential of this genera generation, yet also exposed the disconnect between their expectations and the workforce they're now entering. And it led to disengagement, dissatisfaction, and separation. So leaving sooner. Right. And I think if you have a conversation with your generational age gap between someone who's 23, 24, maybe all the way into 20, 28, 27, and they're looking at you, and they may be leaving jobs faster because the opportunity isn't as presented to them, so they don't feel like the recognition's there. Because I heard one of the things I heard the most was, I have experience. It may not be as much experience as someone who's been there for 30 years, mm -hmm. but I'm willing to do more if they would just give me the opportunity. And that makes me think about, so I'm 45 years old. That makes me look, the first thing that went through my head was, well, you're kind of a liability if you're just going to leave a job so quickly. But then I think about maybe I need to rethink the way that I th I've been taught. Mm -hmm. Like I was the person who like you started a job, you got kicked around a little bit, you went and got the coffee, you did all the things. And when the opportunity arose and someone really trusted you, they handed you the keys to the car. But are we are we leaving some of the recognition out that people deserve at a younger age or, or even new in a job or even new in a relationship because we're not sure about you know, did you put in your time? And is that generational too? And we talked a little bit even earlier today about the difference between recognition and affirmation and what is that and, and what what makes one more palatable than the other or, right. or, or, or needed more than the other. And I wonder if we're not, if we're not giving enough affirmation for being on the right track, right? To me, affirmation is, acknowledgement that what I'm doing is good work, that what I'm doing matters, that I'm on the right track, not necessarily recognition or public recognition with my peers or others in the company or agency that I work with, 
but I wonder if we're missing a need to give that affirmation that, hey, this is good work. And so by not affirming anything for the younger generation, they're taking it as indifference. Right. Indifference and or even no one cares yeah. a- about my work or, or what I'm doing, and I am not sure that's right. I'm not sure we're sending the right signal. So I do think we need to change maybe our approach. Because, you know, you even look at, like, I think I'm pretty blessed to have, like, a different diverse group of people in my gym and a lot, a lot of business owners. And I think a lot of business owners will look at you and say, well, I did this to get here. I'm one of those guys. Like, I look at some of my new trainers, and I'm like, dude, you guys you need a good solid three years to build your, well, do they? Or do I say, hey, go out and run it. Go out and run your mm-hmm. business. Go out and challenge yourself. Like, I trust you enough that you can do this. You know, this is your business. You're just in my gym. I, maybe I should listen more. I don't know. know. Science would tell us it takes three to five years, right, to do right. anything really well to get good at it. But is the science changing? I right. mean, time goes on, right? So is the science changing? Well, and then it, it'll be interesting in the next couple of years because I think employers were in this like little push and shove. Like, people want more money. People want more to be able to work from home. People want more responsibilities. I think business owners are trying to take companies are taking over, saying you need to come back to work. Um, I'll recognize you in this the old school way, and I think that's where you're seeing like a little bit of push and shove Intention. going back to work. Yeah, mm-hmm. like who's. Like, if, I think if we could find a compromise, like old school, new school, like how do we recognize people for the, not only for what their accomplishments are, but what potential do they actually really have? I agree. And I think that then brings up another point and another maybe whole podcast, and that is how do we talk to each other yeah. in, in a difficult conversation, in a business conversation? Because it's one thing for me to talk to my mom or my kids about how I'm feeling at work. It's a whole different ball game to talk to my boss about how I'm feeling at work or what right. I need to feel differently. Um, and, I, and I think we're missing opportunities by not talking about how we need to talk. Right. right? So I'm going to stay on this before we get the personal issues because the personal one I think is pretty interesting. How do you get recognition at home or from your own personal life? Some of the guys, like, you, you talk to them, like, and I think people who are getting higher up in their, their business world, you ask them, well, how do you get recognition? They're like, it almost stumps someone. Mm. They're like, well, what do you mean? Like, one guy was like, I think my name's on the door of the company. Or someone will be like, so I, I think my name's on the door. <laughs> <laughs> or you see, somebody's like, well, I've been able to pay the bills for the last 33 years. That's, mm. they name recognition. And you see, as I think you accomplish more, you get recognition through other success. Like, now that I have some younger guys starting their own business and girls training in my gym, I'm seeing recognition. If something I can give them helps them to become more successful. And now it's like self-recognition again where I'm like, and maybe if we could teach ourselves to see those little things, we'd be able to give ourselves more recognition, be more successful, not be so unhappy at some of our jobs. If we would just take the time to see all of the things that we're learning all the things that we're accomplishing and all the things we're being successful with. And see those as success, right? right? I think that's a huge challenge for you in your job as a personal trainer because yep. people beat themselves up, right? Yep, me, <laughs> I'm one of them. <laughs> and we don't see, we're looking for the big change. We're looking for the end game, the, yeah. the end change. And sometimes it takes a long time and we can't, we haven't learned how to, you've said this to me, you need to learn how to accept compliment right you need to accept the recognition so then are we missing are we actually missing the recognition that we're getting because we're not um equipped to receive it right I just got my haircut today and it was interesting because during my haircut we were talking about this kind of conversation and one of the things that was said was like I've put 55 percent of my money away for savings so I'm gonna have a nice retirement my comment was that's all I mean that's amazing like, how come we're not living our life today like it's our retirement? Why? What are we doing? Like, we're, it's good to save because you need to have that. We talked about that last time. Mm-hmm. But what are we doing right now for self-recognition to make sure that we're almost living our life like we're in retirement today? Instead of seeing our job as, as something that we have to do, it's seeing as a job as something we enjoy. Mm-hmm. So if we do find those small things, giving ourselves like the high five for 
for the great tutoring session or the great session that you had or the great leadership conference that you led or even just being able to keep your desk clean or keep your gym clean, then all of a sudden maybe retirement will be even more exciting because you were so happy with what you were doing before. And I think that's the drive and the motivation. And when we started the podcast, we we said that, right? How does recognition enter into motivation? I think that that is the motivation. If if that if we can find that self affirmation, that selflessness that helps us see the greatness in the little moments. I mean, it's kind of a recurring theme for us paying attention to the moments, the little moments, right. because they mean more than sometimes the big ones. And I wonder if if that is why at the beginning of your career and even as we start something new, we think we want to go for the thing and then we get the thing and it's not really what we needed. And it might be the trophy. It might be the award. It might be the raise. It might be pr- the promotion, but it's never, again, quite enough. Just like that, yeah. just like we talked about with um, – with security being a illu- being an illusion, it's it's like the affirmation and the recognition is never quite enough. It's elusive. So until we build that from within, well, I'm going to tell you this year it's coming up. I'm going to find it because obviously you changed my whole mindset on the last one that we did. So I got to give a shout out to my little guy Henry. So I asked this question to several people of all age groups. And Henry's 11 years old. He went through some stuff in his life. So I think he has a little bit more intuition sometimes. But I was like, Henry, how do you get like recognition in your 11 year old life? Mm-hmm. And he's like, well, it's nice when somebody tells me that I do something well. He goes, it doesn't happen very often, but I take it when it does. And I had a smile. <laughs> so then he he's goes, 11. He yeah. probably isn't paying attention to all of it. <laughs> right. So then he goes to me, he goes, well, then I, I mean, it was instantaneous thought process, which I was so surprised by 11 year old. And I probably shouldn't be because he's probably looking at me. He's like, this is what 11 year olds do. This is how we think. He's like, if I was to save someone's life, Javier, he goes, it, I would take a little recognition for that. But he goes, if there was two people and I only saved one person's life, I hope no one gives me any recognition because I didn't save both people's lives. And I was like, wow, that's amazing. Because most people were number one, couldn't answer the question. Number two, most people were like, not that in depth. I was like, thank you, Henry, for giving me that little. And they might also say, hey, I saved one of the people, right? <laughs> I took the risk, so I, I deserve some recognition there. And and really, for him, it was more about... Setting the bar higher mm-hmm. for himself and for all of us, I think. I was like, gosh, Henry, you're really setting that bar high. But I was like, I'd still say thank you. <laughs> so we go into the next one, and this is where it's. I think it's very interesting, is how do you do it in your personal life? Like, how do you, like, make sure you're not only getting recognition, but giving recognition to your spouse, to a loved one, to a friend. And I got to tell you this quick story. This week I have a lady who trains, and she's been training with me for a few years. And she, her and her husband have a great relationship. And, but like, she's so funny because she comes and trains, and her husband knows that she trains, and she does it for herself. She tells me that all the time. He stopped in to ask for, he wanted to buy her a present. And I was like, huh. I was like, I wonder if she knows, like, He's here. So I had to ask her. I was like, hey, I was like, I don't want to ruin your Christmas present, but your husband stopped in and he wanted to get you a present, even though you he's not supposed to buy you a present. And she goes, What did you just say to me? I was like, Oh man. I was like, She's mad at me because I ruined Christmas for him. She's like, I'm gonna tear up. She goes, I can't believe he came in here today to buy me some sessions. And it's that side out of the blue recognition that comes out where you don't think someone notices. And when they do, it just floors you. And the little tear that was coming out of right almost made me tear up myself because I think sometimes we, we miss that. I, I totally agree. It just happened to me too. I was talking to Elizabeth right before we came in and she was so excited because she got an unexpected gift at work from someone she would have not ever imagined or expected a gift from one at work or any time really and um and she said mom honestly it was because I was nice to them because I showed up and was there and available and was was nice and so that on and that is what she said it was like I wasn't expecting it was totally out of the blue and that meant more that was more fulfilling to her than 
than the race that she interviewed for and the job that she got, right? <laughs> it, it's those little moments that mean more. And, and I think for her in particular, that, that said to her, hey, you're showing up in a way that matters, that people yeah. see, that, that people recognize. And she may not have otherwise known that, but that's kind of that affirmation that I was talking about earlier, right? Are yep. we missing our opportunities to say, hey, you are a good presence in this space. You make it better. Right. And it's not even money material things. It's just mm -hmm. those those words. So I think we can do that for people. I think that's one of the things that we do that at home and, and in our workspaces and just in general, in society, being better humans, being kind to each other. I also know that we both have an app that's <laughs> self, that's positive affirmations, and that goes off many times during the day. Um, and it's a habit. I don't know that it's so much as it's so much the words that come up on that app that matter as the habit of getting into the habit of telling ourselves we can, we we do, we will, and it matters. Have you ever had that app just pop up and it's like you're gonna have a great day? And it's like I don't want to have a great and day. Nope, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> like you're wrestling with your phone. You're like I need to turn that, that thing off. But it's true. I was glad that you actually gave me that app because there are days where it just, it says you are doing a great job and you're like, you're right, I am. But you just need that reminder, especially after a long week or a long day or a day that hasn't been going well or a situation in your life mm -hmm. that just isn't working. I'm going to go back to that story real quick because I asked another client and his wife that were sitting in front of me and I told him that story and my client, the husband looks at me and goes, you're going to make me get a divorce because I don't know if I've noticed the things that she likes that much and she kind of smiles but it's kind of true I think sometimes in myself do I not always mm. notice to give that little piece of recognition to somebody but I also I think sometimes we're hard on ourselves because we do it but we don't always give ourselves accolades for doing it or we don't do it enough or we could give someone else accolades at the same time or we need recognition for doing it and we should we I, sh I almost said, and we shouldn't, but that's judgmental, <laughs> right? And and I don't know that that's true, but sh should we? Yeah, I should that stop us from continuing to do it? I think a lot of times people are going to hear this podcast and think these guys are just way too positive for us. And mm -hmm. I hope maybe that's a good fact, because I think there's a lot of times what we're talking about is, is real stuff. Like, it's hard to have a conversation to realize, am I doing everything in my house to make sure that I'm making sure my loved ones feel good and am i am i not only recognizing them in good times but also in bad times am i making sure that i am recognizing them when things aren't going that well am i giving the pep talks that they need when you know maybe work's not going that well or school's not going that well or they're making mistakes that you wouldn't make mistakes and recognize them in a way that is a positive way and a learning experience you know my son has not got his car fixed for six months it sits on me and you know, what he had to do is ask me and i've been trying to help him but my first thing is to say, hey, that's wrong. But instead of saying, hey, let's let's figure it out. And what's uh, going on? Yeah, what's yeah. going on? What's, what's the real issue? Mm -hmm. Like maybe yeah. instead of just saying, hey, great job on your grades, what, what, how is the rest of your life going? Yeah, true. And I, I'm having a challenging week. It, you know, it's, a se it's been a challenging year, actually, a bit of a season. But you said to me as we were prepping for this, it's important to recognize what we need internally, personally, because when it gets rough, when the days get hard, when the seasons are challenging, you can weather them. Right. If you can dig into that self-worth and self-value, and, and even when you start to challenge yourself, doubt yourself, somewhere in there, it lives so that you know you can keep going. I'm going to tell you a good job on episode two because <laughs> I was nervous about episode two because when you come off episode one and you're like, gosh, that somebody says you did a good job, you stress out a little. And I want to And we got some good accolades, right? Yeah. I, and we appreciate that. We also appreciate the challenge. Yeah. So I think we've done a great job talking about this. Is that what we're supposed to tell ourselves? Because <laughs> you, 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 you just told me you just told me that job. we're supposed to tell, you to tell ourselves a good job. I do think, though, we want to end with a challenge again yeah. today. Um, and there's two things to think about. We've talked about both of them. Recognition when you're receiving it and also recognition when you're giving it. 
So here's our challenge. Think about where you find value in recognition and affirmation and how important it is or isn't to you and your self-worth, right, and value, so that when you receive it or you don't, either way, your identity and self-worth isn't compromised. And also, know your impact. Amazing. I'm Javier. And I'm Tammy. And this is, t- <laughs> this is Shed Talk. This podcast is brought to you by Infinite Resources, a local staffing agency connecting diverse job candidates and central Iowa companies. Amplified.